Hey, MacDowan here. Today we are reviewing the 6-inch Fortnite Shadow Midas Legendary Series action figure. I got this from Amazon for $19.99 and have to admit, I was surprised they went this route. I thought we would get a neutral Midas instead. Either way, he is still a pretty cool looking figure. Alright, let's take a look at the back side of the box. Up near the top is the quote, Shadow Midas, all that glitters is yours. Down near the bottom is the cross cell, and we still have not seen the full reveal for Dark Voyager yet. But here he is over on the left. For those who want to see the barcode, here it is. Let's get this figure open and take a look at him. If you are new to the channel, welcome, and please subscribe so you'll be notified of future videos. If you want to help the channel out and you play Fortnite, please feel free to add my creator code to your epic account. It's McDowan. Before we jump into the review, I just want to point out one thing, and that is the really cool background to this package. It's the Midas gold handprint that we've seen in the past, but it's just really cool that Jazz Wars is now doing more than just a solid, solid color background. They're actually doing something that reflects the character. Very cool. Let's get to the review. Midas is a legendary skin, and he's part of the Golden Ghost set. Released in Chapter 2, Season 2, he was released in the battle pass at tier 100. Now let's take a look at the accessories and then the figure. He comes with the Golden King harvesting tool and this is a pretty nice looking thing. It's got the gold chain, it's got the gold head, brown axe handle, and some golden diamond pattern grips. And he has the gold dagger pack back bling. This looks pretty good too. It's got the brown sheath and the gold handle and the grayish color pack. Now it's kind of nice that this is a backpack because when you flip this around it's got a lot of interesting little jazz wears details on it that we don't want to see. So this is the best place probably to put that next to the peg. So when it's on his back we won't see all that ugly legal international shipping whatever stuff. And we get a gold hand cannon that's been molded in gold as best as I can tell. It means no paint apps. It's a good thing this guy, everything he touches turns to gold, so uh, <laughs> you don't have to add extra paint apps <laughs> to this gun. We get a gold minigun, although I'm kind of curious why the letters aren't gold. Isn't his touch supposed to turn everything to gold? It's still pretty neat. Uh, we haven't gotten a gold minigun, although I do wonder why it came with Midas. Maybe this should have come with a future Brutus action figure, because wasn't he the one that had the minigun in-game? And we get a gold drum gun. I don't know if they're officially calling this Midas's drum gun, but I will refer to it as Midas's drum gun. It's pretty neat. I wish they would have used the gold plating that they used on the drum gun for the mythic goldfish, that really, really shiny mirrored gold. That was very cool. This is more of a shiny flat gold. It's not nearly as dynamic. That would have been really cool to see the gold in this. And, you know, having... Uh, well, I'll get to it later. But anyway, yeah, this is pretty neat. I like the drum gun anyway, and we'll throw it around. That's how much I like it. It's face-off time. Let's take a look at the faces. He comes with this face. And that face. Oh, my goodness! And that face. That one is cool. It looks a little different. It's not fully gold. It kind of doesn't blend when we look on the side. It really doesn't actually blend very well with his half gold face. If they would have maybe golded the edges or something just a little bit, then that might have looked better. I don't know. This one looks just kind of weird. What do you think? A lot of people who got the 4-inch version of this character wasn't very happy with his proportions. If you get this figure, or at least look at this figure, you should be a lot happier with his proportions. He doesn't look as wide. He's much skinnier. Look at these slender legs. But uh, I would say this is much more in line with what the figure looks like in-game and the promo posters. It's very neat. He's all black, including his tie. And he's gold everywhere else. Uh, there's a couple silver buckles. There's one and a couple buttons right there. And I guess actually this is more of a black and this is maybe a light black or a very dark gray. Keep putting this guy out of the camera. But generally speaking, this is a really great looking Midas figure. And I really hope that at some point down the road we get the other versions of Midas. I don't know how many Legendary Series figures we've gotten um, updates of. We got the two Omegas. But I don't think any other Legendary Series figure we've gotten a second version of yet. And there's hundreds and hundreds of almost a thousand 
Fortnite skins out there now, so it might be a while before they decide to uh, rework a Legendary Series figure. I don't know. But anyway, let's take a look. He has 38 points of articulation, so can we find them all? I'm sure we can, because we've been doing this for a while now. His head rotates back and forth and all the way around, and he looks up. He can, if you look up too far, you, know, well, you rip his face off. <laughs> And he looks down like that. And his arms rotate. He's got the butterfly joint right there. And the shoulder moves up and down. There's rotation at the bicep. The elbow has double pins. The wrist has a rotation and a hinge. As well as the finger hinge. The torso moves around pretty well, actually. That's pretty good, if you ask me. The waist moves. But it's hiding under the lower portion of this hard plastic this isn't soft this is a harder plastic shirt but it will rotate because i can get it to just a little bit but there's a hindrance because of that if you want midas to do the splits he can well he's a little off center but he can do them about that far he's got the thigh rotation right there double pin at the knee there is no calf rotation on this figure and the ankles rotate have a hinge actually there's a double I'm not sure if it's called a double ball joint or what, but there's a joint, there's a, a place it connects in the foot, and then even the ball at the ankle will rotate. So you've got a couple, actually, rotations there. So when you uh, rotate the foot, be careful, because you may get, get yourself off, and when you uh, hinge at the ankle, it may do something weird. Finally, there is a toe articulation right there. I notice most of the figures that have this kind of a pant or this kind of a leg has a ball joint that hooks up into it. So that's kind of interesting. Anyway, yeah, he's really pretty cool. There's a few things that I would be cautious and concerned about in the future. One, the guns. Two, the grenades. Eh, maybe three is this little rope right there. The guns look like they're just kind of pegged in and maybe attached with glue. So the arms here, with too much movement around, uh, just moving your fingers around, maybe uh, different kinds of weapons here, might snag these and try to pull those off. So you're gonna have to be careful with those guns. The grenades are in a much less snaggable, is that the right word? Snaggable position, they're kind of down around the back here. And they feel much sturdier on here. I'm guessing it's not just a peg, it may be like a little rectangular connector back there. However, this rope, maybe I'm going to upgrade this. The guns are one, the rope is two, the grenades are three. If this snags and pulls, that might rip. Uh, it's, it's very soft, you can see. Very soft, uh, pliable piece of plastic. And it's connected up under there on both sides. Oh, no, you can actually see there's glue where it connects on the back of the pant there. I'm not sure if you can see it, but I can see it with my lights. So, yeah, eh, maybe one, two, and three for most fragile, most uh, problematic. Otherwise, pop this guy on a shelf, pose him up, and he's good. He's a uh, golden. <laughs> Sorry, couldn't resist. Very cool figure. Very, very neat. I think it's pretty well time to get this guy geared up and take a look at what he looks like with his gear in an action pose as he falls over. The minigun was actually pretty hard to get into his hands and even still it might fall out, I don't know. But he looks pretty impressive holding it. The backpack on the other hand slid right in no problems, probably one of the easiest back blings I've put in a, on a figure. So it's very cool and he does strike some good poses. The hand cannon feels a little loose in his hand, He's, you can get him to hold it but it's loose. The harvesting tool fits in there. His hand actually grips down on that really pretty good. There's no complaints about that. One thing I do notice is on mine, there's like a seam on the right side of the deck and a bit of a black, so I don't know. All right, let's finish it up. Saving the best for last, the drum gun. He holds it pretty good, but as I was uh, thinking, it's a little hindering with the guns on his side when you're trying to put a gun under his arms, but he you can strike a good pose. I decided to switch the face up because, well, why not? He looks a little bit more crazed with that face, and he's got a crazed gun, so yeah. 
time for some size comparison. Midas actually is a rather shrimpy looking figure next to some of these. G.I. Joe Classified on the right and Marvel Legends on the left. Look how short he is. Oh my goodness. Here he is next to another Fortnite Legendary Series figure and a Star Wars Black Series figure. Here he is next to a Jazzwares Halo figure and a Lannard Predator figure. And finally, standing next to a Brawler's action figure and a Fortnite McFarlane figure. Overall, I think Midas is another winner. And Jazzwares has had a long line of really awesome figures, and it's really difficult to say that any of them are really that bad. They're really all pretty good. Anyway, thank you for stopping by and watching. What do you think about this figure? Is this a hit or a miss? Leave your thoughts in the comments section below. And on your way out, check out my recent review of Aerial Threat in the lower left corner. Thanks again, and I will see you in the next video.